It's now time to take a look at this giant truck and we're going to have a look at some of the things that I love about this. Some of the things I think are a little kind of weird. And we're going to talk about whether or not this is actually worth the money. Let's have a look. First things first, you're going to grab this thing out of the box and take a look at the transmitter and decide whether or not you're going to be happy driving this thing all day. Let me tell you. A couple things are interesting about this new transmitter. This of course is the Spectrum. It's not Axial per se. It's Spectrum now that Horizon is part of the branding. They get to put all their unique radios on that system. And so we have a very interesting all-in-one power system on this vehicle where the receiver and the speed control and the ESC are all mixed in together with the Beck mixed in with the light controller and mixed in with the auxiliary channel here for the dig all one unit that makes it simple for sure the other thing it does is kind of limit your options for what you're going to change when you decide you want to do modifications on the vehicle because it is a brushed speed control so going to brushless is going to mean a complete system change not just the esc and the receive and the speed control anymore you're going to also have no more receiver. You will also have no more light controller. You will have no more use for this transmitter. And there's quite a few other things that will change in the truck if you decide to change this to brushless. If you keep a brush motor in here, then of course you can change it because the brushed setup that's in here will probably work for a variety of motors, including probably five poles. It looks like it's a 40 amp ESC. There should be lots of power in there for that. If you do use the smart battery setup, you'll have all of your meter readings right here on the transmitter. Kind of handy. I kind of like it. I like the SVC settings. AVC, I guess, on this it's called. I like the throttle control. I like the braking adjustment. There's a few things I like about these radios. I like that they're only four AA batteries because you can get those at any convenience store on your way to meeting your buddies to go crawling because you forgot your spare batteries very easy to get good job axial why would i not like a truck that looks as good as this this is bonkers this thing has all the details that could ever be wanted it's just detail after detail after detail on this thing like we've got a, an incredible looking tube cage we have a complete separate piece of Lexan which is the interior tray and we've got steering wheel we've got seats shifters foot pedals it's a manual shift transmission amazing we have a spare tire light buckets in the front and the back which have separate control channels in case you want to put a different light controller on it the scoop is cool we've got full inner fenders complete floor pans this truck is absolutely full of details. We take a look inside. We've got a complete 3D scale motor on top of what looks like a not unreasonable transmission. We have a technical stuff like a dig on here that's pre-installed. It's a two-speed optional, multiple sizes and positions of battery trays. We've got uh, light sockets for rock lights Ex extra body mounts that come in case you want to switch it for a different 313 body we've got spinners for lock nuts not sure about that cool actual bead lock wheels these are no longer glue-ons amazing they're no longer glue-ons a complete Firma 40 all-in-one electronic system that works directly with the Spectrum. I mean, the amount of stuff on this truck just brings it to a completely new level of scale RTRs. And I cannot thank Axial and Horizon and the team enough for spending the energy and time on this. There's a couple of things that stand out for me as keys and why I think this is worth the money. First of all, the technology in this truck is a really, really high level. We have a decent long range radio and all waterproof electronic ESC and it's got the light controller built in. It's got the 
dig already set up. It has auxiliary channels on the receiver. It is flashable for new programming if you need to. There's a lot of stuff going on on the electronics and technology side. And when you put that whole package together, everything on this truck should work for a really long time. Everybody that buys a full-blown RTR like this truck wants to have a vehicle that will last them for a long time and this is the one. There are no components on this which I would recommend need to be changed right now. All of them are quite reasonable. I will grant you that the servo on the steering is not a high power servo, but it does have a really solid cast metal horn on it. It is very well made. I have used these servos for a long, long time. It's the S614 Spectrum servo. Not incredibly strong compared to what we're used to with 20, 30, 40 kilogram servos, but still a very decent servo. The little shift servo has a complete brass outer unit on output on it, which means it's not going to just shear off the plastic tip. It's good. Thank you, Axial opening and closing doors, a possibility to put a roof on the vehicle, like I mean a lot of stuff going on here. This is definitely the highest valued RTR that I have seen for this price range anywhere. Amazing. Now, my favorite things and my least favorite things, and we'll close with that. I love the fact that this thing has a separate interior pan. For anybody that has tried to paint or repaint a, one of the hard bodies that's out there, you know how much masking can be involved. And when you have like a two-door Jeep, for instance, and you've got that full molded interior already in it, you try to mask that off to repaint and, and one side or the other, and it is a lot of work. I am going to repaint this on the outside and redo all the graphics and make it personalized because that's what RC is all about. They made it easy. I have to unbolt all this plastic stuff, no problem. And I actually can take out the black part of the Lexan tray. It is all one separate piece and the only thing I will have left is the white Lexan which I can then simply prep and paint without having any effect on the interior pan. That is really, really cool. I love the fact that it's got a straight axle with a far offset front diff. It gives you a little extra clearance in the center, but more so than that, it looks realistic finally. None of this centered front axle stuff that nobody has on their truck. Nobody. Because we all have offset front output shafts on transfer cases. They have to get around the transmission somehow. Now we're getting into all the scale stuff and I love that and I'm just so happy that Axial finally put that right on the market. And I'll close with this. The last thing that I want to say that what I just simply, I'm having a hard time with this and I've heard this from other people too. This truck is huge and it will be a very successful off-roader because it is so big if you take it on the same kind of terrain as a TF2 sized truck, which this K5 Blazer is, you're going to end up with a real discrepancy in ability. And that is a little bit disturbing because if you're trying to make courses for say, tiny tire trucks or other scale trucks, this is every bit a class one truck with the single exception of the tire size, which is simply too big for class one rules. Other than that, this truck has every single feature that you would want on a class one truck. It's got all the opening and closing doors, the full width bumpers that match the windshield, all the lights, every single thing that's required for class one high points is in this truck, except the tire size. Same with this one, but they won't go the same places. I find it really odd because the Bronco, although everybody loves it and there's a lot of push for early Bronco stuff right now in the real world, the full size world, this truck would be far smaller than a K5 Blazer if you had the two of them out in your laneway beside each other. 
This is a tiny truck, except when it comes from Horizon and Axial. That's a little weird. Anyway, I'm a Bronco freak. There's one right there. There's one right there. There's one right here. What can I say? Thank you very much for watching. If you guys have comments about which tire and rim you think I'm going to put on here, which I will, please add your suggestions in the comments. I love to read your comments and make sure you give me any tips and tricks you have on putting this truck together. We will be doing a rebuild on the channel. Watch for that. And we will see you guys on the next one.